Welcome to For Formula One's Sake. This week, welcoming our new Lance Stroll fans. Turns out there are seven of them, and they're all very angry with us. So, <laughs> hi! I just did. I did a. I did a tweet that went viral. And I don't like it because it's just irritating. Because uh, when you when you do a tweet that gets proper numbers, all these c- come out of the woodwork, and they're really unfunny. And I hate everyone, and I'm sick of life. Thanks for listening. Like and subscribe. Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, which this week is decked out entirely in green and yellow. And if you're not, then you're fucking scum. Why do you hate Senna? I'm, I've, I I've realise I hate Senna. I'm not wearing green and yellow, so I apologise. I yeah. think I. I think this weekend has made me hate Ayrton Senna. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't know who Senna was, you'd be there going, God, he must have saved a lot of kids. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, the narcoleptic procession of F1 podcasts. Buckle in, because this podcast got a lot of history, but it's going to be boring as fuck. I've been doing podcasts since 2008. This is the shittest Monica I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from the first lap, but we'll get to that. Welcome to For Formula One's Sake. This first bit is going to be really dramatic, but the rest will make you want to cut your own ears. Holy shit! Whoa! Come on, guys, work with me here. Oh, my God, craziness! Ah. No, this is not not going to work unless everybody else does it. What are we doing? We're doing explosions. We're doing dramatic. Exciting. First lap drama. Sorry, I missed the start of the race. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, the Monegasque F1 podcast from Monaco. Did they mention this week? Because they had. A, did you know they actually had a monogas driver in the race? Who? I saw. Th- I saw how the princess looked at him on the podium. <laughs> I want to fucking hung- bang that. She was hungry saying. eyes. <laughs> yeah. Monogasque sounds like a part of a car, doesn't it? Yes, that was all yeah, that was left of Sergio Perez's car was the monogasque. <laughs> the monogasque. Monogasque is gone again. Uh, the monogasque has done his job. The driver's alive. <laughs> Welcome to For Formula One Sake, the podcast F1 deserves. I'm Ollie Peart, and Jesus fuck, that was boring. From our beds where we've been ever since Sunday afternoon, we're going to talk about the Monaco Grand Prix. Even a damn good effort by Kevin Magnussen and Esteban Ocon couldn't polish this turd. We had low expectations, and even then they weren't met, although, in fairness, the opening lap was quite fun. We'll talk about that, probably mention how we took over the social medias again, and then get mired in some distraction that has very little, if anything, to do with Formula One again. That's all to come. Joining me is a man who never wants to use a bathroom again. It's Phil Tromans. <sighs> the long-running bathroom drama continues. So tomorrow, apparently, they're coming back to do some more of the bathroom. And we went down to get the bits of the bathroom that had been in our garage for a month waiting to be fitted. And we took the covers off our brand new uh, brand new vanity unit, like the bit that the sink goes on. So vain. And uh, it's got a massive fucking dent in it, but because it's been so long since we had it delivered, we can't send it back anymore. Oh. You mean it's gone off? <laughs> it has pretty much gone off. So yeah, there's a massive fucking dent in it. It's not yeah, expensive so- enough to be able to get a replacement bit for it. So we just have to scrap it and get another one. Yeah, no. so fucking annoying. Sorry, mate, these vanities, you've got to use them within six weeks, otherwise they're, it, they're rubbish. It, it does seem that, like, in terms of quality, this is basically, like, just slightly above IKEA quality, mm. which means you can buy the unit, but you can't get any spares, and it's too shit a quality to be able to repair it if it gets dented. It's not like wood where you could just get another bit of wood. It's like some sort of plastic laminate nonsense. And, uh, and it's fucked, and we haven't even taken out the fucking packaging yet, and it's already knackered. So, uh, so that's good. So I have to buy another one. how angry you are. I'm voice. pretty angry. The annoying thing is so we don't know how it got damaged. I, I suspect one of the contractors who's been moving other stuff has dropped something on it and then just not mentioned it. But I have no proof. So, yeah, it's another yeah, 230 quid down the drain. Yeah, but you could just use them anyway and try and get yeah. some money off. I mean, there, yeah, but then they'll probably just, you know, do, do the bathroom in the shape of a cock just to just fuck with me. Like mine. Yeah. Um, but what? you did your own because that's what Germany does. Yeah, it's true. Actually. Got what? Bathrooms. What are you like with workmen? What are you like? What? So, not getting into you your like, so, not getting into your sordid fantasies here, Terry. <laughs> no, I don't. What, no, what are you like with workmen? Do you do you kind of go a bit? <laughs> hello, hello, uh, hello, young man. You look like you could climb a roof. <laughs> I, th- I mean, you know, I'm alright. Can right. I see your cock? <laughs> cock, 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 cock. cock. <laughs> <laughs> Penis. Um, yeah, I'm all right. I'm not one of those sort of. At least I don't think I'm one of those weird middle class guys that are just like, oh, hello, would you, would you like a pims? Um, I'm just kind of yeah, just talk to them really. 
Always offer, some always of my offer best friends are tradesmen. <laughs> always offer a drink. Yeah. And if you're particularly nice, biscuits. Yeah. Always get proper milk in. And that's where. You, yeah. Just that. And just stop it there. Any yeah. more? Offer any more? You're a weirdo. Offer yeah. any less. I talk to them about cunt. football. I talk to them about Formula One. Oh. Well, actually, oh, no, well, I don't even some, bother of, some of them I talk to about Formula One. Some of them I talk to, to about British touring cars because most of them are more into the British touring cars. How do you even get one. into that that point? Though? I've got an electrician at the moment doing stuff on the house. How do you even go? Do you just go up to them and go, uh, yeah, so uh, do you watch the F1 at the weekend? Why would you bother doing that? Why Why would you I, just not go, why are my fucking plugs into, not in the right place? <laughs> they came into this room because they're going to refurbish it and they saw all the F1 memorabilia um, everywhere. And they were like, oh, do oh, F1 do it? This dent in this vanity looks like Snetterton. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have had a very good conversation about that. You see, I, I use my working class Who roots. Who the fuck's Jason plato this, I'd say? I use my working class roots and I get quite... All right, mate, how you doing? Hey. White slags. Hey. What then, you fucking cunts? And then my middle class anxiety <laughs> steps in and I, I kind of loiter. I, I, I never want to... I never want to just like go back into my room and do stuff in case they're stealing something. But then, <laughs> <laughs> so then I just kind of hang in the doorway, like looking at them. All right, well, hey, well, uh, I'm just going uh, down to Waitrose to get some almond milk. Do you want anything? Do you want to see my cock? <laughs> cool. Oh shit! <laughs> and beside him is a man whose new router has a fucking screen on it. It's Terry Ooh. Saunders. Living in the future. Do you mean router as an internet router or router as in for carving out of wood? Internet router? Right, right. I think I've been a bit conned because my old internet, which is Berlin Slow, is about, was about 100 megabit books. <laughs> and then they come round. <laughs> what did you just say? <laughs> it's German for megabit. 100 megabit books. <laughs> I will have so 100, 100 megabit books, yeah. <laughs> and they came, someone came around to the door, and like they were, I think I said this the other week, and they said, we've got this, they call it glass fibre, which is fibre optic internet. So I'm like, oh, great, I'll have some of that. So I signed up, and I got it all installed. This is working class roots coming through again. <laughs> but working class I don't know what working class is. <laughs> I don't know what working class is. Yeah. <laughs> Get now. <laughs> and, um, and then, so then the, router, then the router comes, and I plug it in, and it's got a fucking screen on it. It's got a little kind of connecting thing, and it's like, there's a tiny little tiny little black and white screen on the router which is a oh, black and white screen well it's, it's like dot matrix but it's stupid it's fucking stupid it's just lit up it lights up the whole fucking room mm. <laughs> just, ironically anyway. your, your internet video froze for us while you were saying going on that route uh, that round oh, so it's clearly working very well well no but then I did I did the speed test by mm. Ookla oh yeah oh yeah Oh, I love Classic. It. Shout I out love to Ookla. Ookla. I wish they could sponsor <laughs> not the sponsored but if they want to well who the fuck are Ookla well we just we uh, just it's just a couple just of blokes, isn't it? Just we just trust them. Yeah, and it's like, all right, I'm Ookla. Anyway, my new internet has got speeds of about 100 megabits. And I'm like, hang on a minute. I thought I thought fibre went up to like 200, 300, 500, a million. Anyway, then I checked the contract I've signed, and I've signed up for 100 megabits. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm paying more. So... Uh, <laughs> Learn German. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was speaking to me in English, but he just knew that he could get away with it. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, you went to fucking up his, that. his English was better than yours. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. Is that Jason Plato? <laughs> uh, Ollie, have you been conned by anyone in a different language? <laughs> yeah, well, whilst we're on the tech thing, yeah, kind of. But this oh. time with my printer. So I've got a... It's right down here. It's very exciting. I've had it for many years, just a printer scanner thing. Yep. And um, I had an ink subscription, right? Oh, so you Ooh, that pay... sounds like a scam straight off. Well, it, it's, it's Hewlett-Packard. If you're listening <clears throat> to Hewlett-Packard, fuck you. Oh, uh, top Ferrari sponsors. You've got to be careful. I don't care. You pay uh, £1.99 one a month or whatever, and then it connects to the internet, your printer. And then when you run out, you uh, they send you a new one, right? But you, you could get a number of pages that you can print each month. So you can't print any more than, like, it's like 100 pages or something. I can't remember. I know. Yes. You, Phil is making what? a face. It's very odd, isn't it? Anyway, and I thought, well, I don't even print that many anyway. And I've had the same cartridges in this printer for probably about seven years. So <laughs> what I'm going to do is cancel the subscription, <laughs> stop paying £2 a month, and then I'll just buy some cartridges when I need it. I've still got some ink left in the cartridges, maybe 80%. Cancelled the subscription. 
and I now cannot use my printer. They will not. <laughs> they will not let me use. They've nobbled the, your printer. They won't let me use the cartridges that I've got on the subscription. Fucking that hell. I've cancelled. I have to go and buy. You have to subscribe to your rink. <laughs> I, I have to subscribe or go to a shop and buy cartridges. Th- I that think this is, is the actually, scam of the fucking century. I am. I think th- Ferrari furious. need to be very careful about this because they're now in bed with Hewlett Packard in a major way. So oh. what if they stop paying their ink subscription? Their car will just won't work. They won't be able it, to get in the car. It will Lewis never Alberton. be red. It will Lewis, just- Al- <laughs> <laughs> Lewis Hamilton will be about to win his first Ferrari Grand Prix, and it will just be like, uh, <laughs> yeah, cannot print, connect. Pr- print queues failed. <laughs> like, I just. It, 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 honestly, it baffles me. A daylight robbery. So anyway, so that happened uh, this week, and it's made me quite mad. Good. I, I, quite, read, I quite like I, a regular slot of Ollie hates this F1 sponsor this week. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, I can find plenty of those. In fact, I'm regularly looking out for the sponsors. And whilst I was watching the Monegasque Grand Prix, uh, I did wonder how much it actually costs to just be one of those little tiny stickers on uh, the Halo. You know, more than we've got. Yeah, sure, but I think I, I think you know. I think I saw a YouTube video that said a uh, 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 what's it called? The, where they put the mirrors? Mm. What's that called? Side. The, 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 the left the mirrors. and right. I think there uh, to get your name to get your company on that. I think it's about a million for <gasps> a year. How much have we got in the bank account? We no. could afford to try and get Nigel Mansell to think about us for 10 <laughs> seconds in about 2027. Well, you've lurked next to him in a, in a toilet stall for long enough that he probably thought about you for a bit. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> News! Carlos Sainz, who is being hoofed out of Ferrari next year in favour of Lewis Hamilton, may be heading to... Williams? Who saw that coming? Everyone kind of thought he'd go to Sauber for 2025, but Williams appear to be courting him with a vigour just on the legal side of harassment. And the word on the street says Carly is tempted. With a decent level of investment, a newly confirmed decent teammate in Alex Albon and a well-regarded team principal in James Vowles, signs seem positive for a return to form for Williams. Worth considering for signs, then? Signs seem positive. Uh, Uh, Signs. 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 Okay. Um, Very good. My initial reaction to this was like, what? But then, when I think about it a bit, for the reasons you've just outlined, Dolly, it's actually maybe not as terrible an idea as, as you first think, because the, the, everyone started with like, well, he's going to go to Sauber, uh, I, which is going to be Audi. But then you're thinking, well, Audi's basically starting from scratch. You know, Sauber is shit. Audi have not done this in God knows how long. It, they're doing their own engine, which they've never done before it's going to be a bit all over the place. Whereas Williams has now got Albon confirmed. They've got James Vowles in charge. They've got, uh, is it Doralton Capital supplying some mm-hmm. cash who appear to be in it for the long run. And while they are, not, they're, you know, way at the back at the moment, you'd have to say they've got things in place that in theory should get them better. And, you know, with an Alex Albon and Carlos Sainz driver lineup is a pretty good driver lineup, I would say. Mm. Yeah, it does feel... It makes more sense than all you think about it, I think. What is there a saying that's the opposite of rats fleeing a sinking ship? Rats re- returning to the rising ship? <laughs> rats rats <laughs> getting, on board board, ship getting on board a perfectly decent ship <laughs> in, the, in a dock. <laughs> yes. It's in port. There's, we're, in, we're in Dover, and there's a boat, and there's a bunch yeah. of rats merrily with the little knapsacks, you know, the, <laughs> the stick with a dotted handkerchief going, like with yeah. a Disney song, going, we're going to go to It's Stuart Wendy Little Gums. 3, is what we're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Stuart goes to New York. No, he's already in New York. Where's he go? I don't know. The Bahamas. Monaco. <laughs> sure. Never seen it. Stuart goes to Bahamas. Or Monaco. Yeah. That would work. Uh, I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I, I think... If you want to be in from the bottom end and not move teams every two years, as Carlos Sainz has done throughout his career. Well, I've read yeah. this and thought the same. I think everybody sort of thought, what the fuck, didn't they? I mean, but... But, uh, but I mean, but please now, correct me if I've... Said, if I've yeah. yeah, what you've just said to me kind of makes a bit of sense. And also, well, first. Albon didn't have a shitty weekend, really, did he? And I think No, I mean, he he's a had a couple driver. of shitty weekends. But no, this, this weekend went well for him. Yeah, but they, the thing that makes them extra shit, I mean, the car is shit, is Sergeant, but, you know, he's gone. So yeah. I think, it, you know. And now they're getting, you know, they're getting rid of Excel. They stopped subscribing. I, I was going to say they stopped subscribing to Open Office or whatever it's called. 
but they're, they're not doing the subscription office, are they? They're still using Office 98 or whatever was installed on the PCs when they bought them. Um, they, so haven't got a Hewlett, they haven't got a Hewlett Packard subscription because everything's still a dot matrix printer in the garage. <laughs> Or one of those carbon copy machines. <laughs> what, <laughs> what I wouldn't give for a fucking dot matrix printer right now. <laughs> I, it's, it's an interesting move. And again, this is all scurrilous rumour. Nothing's confirmed. But on the face of it, that kind of makes sense. Because that is, they're, they're at a level where Carlos Sainz in that team is a good signing. Mm. And yes. we were talking before it's about, like, if you were going to a top team, like, Carlos Sainz is not quite good enough. He's not an Antonelli. He's not a Hamilton. He's not a... You know, whoever else is about at the at the very top echelon. And you're not a Fernando Alonso before he confirmed that he was staying at St. Aston. But but Williams, you'd have to say that that is not a bad driver lineup to to haul a team out of the doldrums. But it would put him so it would not Albon down as like the sort of primary, you know, the top driver. Well, that, I mean, that that'd be a question because I actually, if you said to me who's better, Albon or Sainz, so I'd have to say well they're pretty even. I'd say in terms of which I think is the better driver. Mm. Science has got a bit more experience. It's going to be Mansell and PK all over again. Oh, that'd be good. Uh, I mean, actually, now you've said that, that could end absolutely terribly for Williams, but I don't know. It'd be we'll great see. to see them, re- you know, return to form, but uh, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, and we said before, I mean, know, I'd like Williams to do well. For shits and giggles, I would just like them to offer Carlos Sainz a one-year contract. And he'd be like, come on! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, good. We'll talk more about his transgressions later on, but following his tangle with his teammate in Monaco, could Esteban Ocon be shelved for the Canadian Grand Prix? Bruno Famine, Alpine's furious team principal, suggested that consequences would be forthcoming for Ocon, whose optimistic move on Gasly launched his car into the air and out of the race. And now rumours say that Ocon will be benched in favour of reserve driver Jack Doohan in Montreal. Thoughts? <sighs> Interesting, interesting. Should we should we run back what Ocon did? Yeah. So this was lap one of the race while everyone was getting all like, "Oh, science has science has gone off. He's got a puncture. Holy fuck! Perez has exploded." And then it turned out later that a few corners beyond that, Ocon had tried a very, very, very optimistic move <clears throat> on Gasly <laughs> that did not work at all, and sent himself launching over Gasly's wheels and knackered his car and got himself out of the race. And Bruno Fama as I believe is pronounced. No, um, famine. Fam, Bruno Fama. It's famine. Um, apparently said to French TV, words to the effect of, I'm fucking furious and he's in deep shit. Um, and I think it was Craig Slater on Sky, today as we record this, said that the the rumour is that Ocon will be shelved, will be, will be not allowed to race in Canada to basically say this is not fucking acceptable sort your shit out because it's not the first time Ocon's done shit like this mm. and in the in the in the tempestuous ghastly Ocon relationship that frankly I think we thought would be a little bit worse but is now starting to bubble quite nicely he seems to be the main bad guy um, and the talk is that they're going to bring Jack Doohan who is the son of ace motorbike racer Mick Doohan and is apparently quite well regarded he's been we've buzzing around we've spoken about him before two. actually haven't we have we? We might yeah, have done. Yeah, ma- many episodes ago, but I do remember you talking about him. But is he... He's meant to be... It might have been in testing or something. Like he's, he's pretty well regarded, I believe. Mm. Not Antonelli regarded, but like well regarded. Well enough that, uh, you know, Alpine's fine. Mercedes, man, probably not. Um, but I, when was the last time? I can't think of a single time, certainly in my time of watching F1, where a driver has fucked up so bad that the team has suspended him. Not because he's got a race banner or anything, but the team has gone, fuck you, you're on the bench. Can you think of anything? I can't think of anything. I mean, I think they used to do it way back in the day, but like, I mean, maybe, I mean, they fired Prost, didn't they, from Ferrari, but I guess it's Grosjean, not really that the was, same thing. Grosjean was a race well, that band. That was because he had a race band, yeah. yeah. That wasn't because he, the team were fucked off with him. So this would be fairly unprecedented. And again, we don't know what's happening. We could be speculating over absolutely well, nothing. Well, I, I will say that if you go on Twitter, Esper Ocon has done a tweet where he says, today's incident was, I'll oh, do it in French, sorry. Today's incident was my fault. The gap was too small in the end, and I apologize to the team on this one. Hoping for a deserve points finish for the team today. So, <laughs> good morning. I think that was. Uh, I didn't realize we had an audio clip of him. That's great to hear. It was brilliant. That was <laughs> so, you know, superb. Racing drivers don't apologize. So he is in shit. If he's he written is, that tweet, he yeah. is in big trouble. What? He is. 
Yeah, but what is the what what is the trouble you can get in as a racing driver apart from being told well, you can sit out of that race, which as you've just highlighted doesn't really happen that I mean, often. That but would, still, it's like it doesn't. But so this would be like a really fucking big. Yeah, but what else can they do? It's like move. okay, well, the, right, you're not going to get the nice Caesar salad that you normally have. Fuck that off. Oof, and also, you're not having a double bed in the in the bus. You can well, have the, the single the, down the bottom or the bunk. There is also rumor that. Ocon is looking for a way out of Alpine, which doesn't seem like that much of a stretch because if you were at Alpine, why wouldn't you be looking for a way out? Um, although apparently Gasly isn't, but anyway, uh, like Ocon because he's also- stuck under Ocon. That's why. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> help! Help! I want to get out. <laughs> I think Ocon's been li- linked to a seat at Haas, and he's been li- linked to a seat at um, uh, Audi as well. So they no, might be just it. like you've been. F- You've been talking to other teams behind our backs, you cheating bastard. And now you're... Oh, yeah, because the French yeah. fucking hate that, don't they? Yeah, they're all about loyalty, the French, and fidelity. Loyalty, fidelity, flag, equality, it? yeah. Um, Alpine. <laughs> so, the, yeah, it appears it really has not gone down well. And I, just from a, you know, I don't have skin in this game, but I'd be intrigued. I'd be fascinated to see if they do it and what that does to Ocon. Like, I think how would Ocon he take that? A, Ocon's a very interesting career, isn't he? Because he's from quite um, poor upbringing, so he's not like a rich kid who's come in. You know, Mercedes linked. There was a while. There was a little moment when you know he was being talked of like Antonelli is now in a kind of could he get the Mercedes seat? <laughs> then he had all the fights with Perez and you know and everything, and then he just then he had to take a year out, didn't he? He's and had fights he's, with everyone. Then oh, wasn't it him that Verstappen, Verstappen nearly punched, punched him at oh, Brazil a few years ago? Yeah, gonna miss him. Oh, yes. He's like, but he's, now, like an, he's like an instigator. Brings out the worst in everyone. But this is a weird thing that I get now for the, for the age that we're all at, pretty much. Old. Is that to me, he's still a young driver. And yet, I guess if you're like 20 now. late 20s now. now. But, it, but if you're 20-ish watching Formula 1, he's one of the kind of has-beens at the back of the grid. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? He's, like, there's, he's, won, mm-hmm. he's won one race. He's a Ralph Schumacher. He, yeah, he's never going to go anywhere. He's got a very long name. He's 27, so... Esteban Ocon. 27? His, na- his real name is Esteban José Jean-Pierre Ocon Kelfane. I mean, if that's the or case, how do you Kelfane. think the, the 20-year-olds feel about um, Alonso and Hamilton? You know, it, it doesn't ring true for all the drivers. It's just he's... just. It's yeah, but they've won around. stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's just not good enough, so people forget What it. would the equivalent of Alonso a, be? So, hang on, Alonso. if I... If I started watching Formula 1 in 1989, which is when Alonso was three years into his career... Louder, um, louder probably. He'd been around But that would be the equivalent the of louder 70s. still racing in 1989. That's well, when did... Now, hang on, you know, he stopped... I guess, P- I guess Fittipaldi it? went for a while, didn't he? Yeah. I think he's still doing the Indy 500, isn't he? Um, how old was Berger then? No, he was probably a bit younger, wasn't he? Anyway, I don't know. You well, carry you on talking, I'll wrong, look it up. You can tell us how wrong we are. Uh, you can do so via social media. We're at For f one Sake on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and still on Facebook. Your mum uses that. It's so old. Your mum and Mark Zuckerberg and your granddad. Uh, or you can email us. Wrong at ff1s.com. Alternatively, if you think we're right, then why not buy us a beer at the Whinging Moustache? It's a pub, except it's a pub without adverts, and the pub is a podcast. Just to be clear, there's no pub yet. But... If you want to listen to us without anyone trying to sell you stuff, then get our rebranded Apple subscription. Head to Apple Podcasts and hit the subscribe button. And there's a free seven-day trial right now. Or if you just want to say thanks for whatever the hell it is we do, then you can donate a one-off pint or three to us at ff1s.com forward slash pint, pint, pint. Um... Here are the teams in exactly the order you'd expect. Ferrari. Charles Leclerc's Monaco curse is finally over and his feel-good victory woke people up from their slumber. Hooray for him! Carlos Sainz also managed to get a podium despite sliding off the track on lap one thanks to the intricacies of race restart rules after the red flag. Let's start with Charles Leclerc. Because, yeah, well done to him. He was very happy. I haven't seen a driver that happy in a very long time. He was very happy. Yeah. Everyone in Monaco was very happy. The crowd was happy. The people on the yachts were happy. We're so rich the and king, we won. The prince, the prince was happy. The prince was spraying the champagne. That was good. Which I don't think is allowed. Do you remember when... Do you remember the prince Turkey? can do what he wants. No, do you remember... And why is he the prince? He's the king. I don't understand. Anyway. 
Do you remember there was a Turkish Grand Prix where they had some political official get up and do the podium? I think if they can't allow that, they can't allow the fucking prince to pretend he's a Formula One driver, right? You've got all the money in the world. You're the <laughs> prince of fucking Monaco. You either shagged Grace Kelly or she's your mum. I'm not sure which. And <laughs> think the latter. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Or both. It's Monaco. They do what the fuck they like. I mean, she died a long time ago when she's not that old. I think we're dabbling in some very, very unsavoury territory there. On a number of levels. <laughs> I don't know what my point is. Except I, just, I hate well, Monaco. I, I, think, I think the point is he, he literally runs the country. I think he right. can do what the hell he likes. Oh, it's not a fucking country. It's a principality, as they oh, keep my, saying. My mistake, Anyone sorry. could run that. Yeah, oh, I maybe that's why he's the it. prince. I don't get what a principality is. It's what? It's like a county. It's like a kingdom, but with a prince. King, kingdom, prince, principality. Right, where, where, hang what? on. Let, 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 name a part of the UK. Let's just make it, I'll explain Monaco. Name a part, any part of the UK. Croydon. Cornwall. Oh yeah, Croydon, go Croydon. All right, Croydon. Imagine you've got Croydon, and then yeah. you went, right, South Croydon from now on is going to be a tax uh free zone sure and everyone goes all right well we'll move to south croydon they go all right yeah. well we'll put in some boats yeah. and a grand prix and, and all the drivers yeah. will come to live there and you know all you croydoners you can fuck off except for you charlie clerk because you were born here and that's it really yeah i mean that would work that's yeah, exactly it, what monaco did i think that's what vatican did what san marino did what andorra did and then i go i'm the Lesotho prince of croydon did. because i've got some money and everyone's like, ooh, the Prince of Croydon, ooh. And I'll marry the equivalent of Grace Kelly, who's um, Scarlett Johansson. Oh, no. That was, that was 20 years ago. I think now it's, um, I don't know, Billie Eilish? I, right. I, don't, I don't know who's, who's got Riz I, these I days. I did meet her once. <laughs> did you? Oh, no, you did. We did a story on the podcast. I remember that, yes. yeah. Billie Eilish? <clears throat> We've had all the stars on this podcast. Yeah, I was meeting Stella McCartney and uh, Billie Eilish was there. Oh. <laughs> wow. I love the last bit you, you remember. <laughs> Well, I was meeting. I was in a meeting in Stella McCartney's office. Stella McCartney wasn't there, um, and Billy Eilish was in the waiting room. I didn't speak to her. Anyway, okay. you know, this is <laughs> unraveling the more you tell it. So, well, actually, I was drinking a can of Stella in a park, and uh, I saw a poster. And Billy Idol <laughs> was playing. Actually, neither of them. Because, because they said it's Billy Eilish in the, in the, when I had this meeting. They were like, "Oh my god, that was Billy Eilish in the reception." And oh, I they just they went, said, "That's Billy's eyelash," and it was just on his on the floor. They said. It was I thought they Billy. said Billy Idol. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was going Billy Piper, which just shows how out of oh, touch yeah, we are. Oh, yeah, that would actually be good. I do recall when you told us that story in the podcast, which was a good few years now, I'd never heard of her at the time, and I had to look up who she was. But, yeah, that anyway, either, anyway, we're hip like and we're with it. So, uh, anyway, that was Ferrari. Hip oh, no, we haven't finished. Um, Carlos Sainz. How the fuck did he... So, he, this was one of these weird things where his, he'd fucked it and his race was over. And yet somehow he was allowed back in and to fix his car and then won the race. No, sorry, I actually, came third. I actually know the answer. Go on. Okay. So Joe Grenu got caught behind the Perez um, Craziness. thing. So he was kind of stuck behind. So he didn't complete to the next timing sector thing um, because he was the last driver that's still going. They kind of did this weird rule where they went, well, no one's gone past the first sector. So it looks like not everyone's gone past the first sector. So therefore, no one has. That makes sense, actually. it didn't happen. So in order to to, to start the race from a set period of where everyone was at the track, everyone needs to have got to a certain point, and he hadn't. Yeah. Right, got you. Okay. But he only hadn't because he was stuck behind the cars that had crashed. But regardless, (laughs) he's a very lucky boy. Um, Because obviously he'd had his, his piastri tangled with, wasn't he? Is he lucky? Because I yeah, should have been I'd, out. No, I'd have rather s- sat that race out. And well, there is that. I mean, he's got points, but I mean, it will. We'll, do we want to get into this straight away about how fucking boring this race was? Uh, yeah. yeah. First I lap mean, aside, this well, seems like a good place. Verstappen was saying it the whole time, wasn't he? The whole weekend, how boring he was. He just the found problem me, was, boring. for me, it was the point is when they said to George Russell about you've got to drive as slowly as you fucking yeah, can. Yeah, you're going too yes. fast, George. Yeah, slow down. And even George Russell, who I hate, I don't know if, I don't know if I've mentioned it, but I hate him, <laughs> was like going, can we not go a little bit faster? And they're like, no, stop it. <laughs> yeah. Why would you want to go faster in a, in a so motor the problem race? Monte Carlo. It's the like problem seemed to be several fold. First off, it was Monaco, which is always boring, and we've said it for years, and, it, and it's always the case. First lap was fun, fine. But the trouble with the first lap fun is that we then paid for it because the red flag allowed everyone to go in and change their tyres. So then the only thing that could have made it vaguely interesting, which is pit stop strategy, changed to we don't 
almost everyone didn't need to pit any again uh, anymore because they changed to a different set of tires. So now their thing was like, right, can we get to the end on a single set of tires and do the, yeah. essentially the whole race? Yeah. And so they just did it as slowly as they possibly fucking could. And I believe this was the first race in F1 history, which is now 75 years. That sounds about right. 74 years. Um, where the top 10 finished in exactly the same order that they started in. And it's like, which is fucking so hell, guys. S- sorry, sorry. Say that again. This is the first race in F1 history where the top 10 on the grid finished yeah. in exactly the same order as they started. Uh, so oh nobody overtook nothing. anybody. There was of one overtake, happened. wasn't there? I, there was one overtake that I noticed anyway, which I think but was Bottas nothing of consequence. Sergeant. Yeah, but that was for nothing. No, uh, it was. I, I, actually, I did want to say, I, did, I do remember that because I was like, Jesus Christ, Logan, I'm not saying you're shit, but you've got overtaken you by got Valtteri overtaken. Bottas at Monaco. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That is like I was thinking exactly the same, and he almost yeah. got overtaken again. And I just thought, oh, and then the head that. of LP was like, "There are going to be consequences <laughs> for this." It's like, right. <laughs> it was just so unfathomably boring. And you know, we say it every year, this shouldn't be a fucking race. And what's interesting is there are a lot more people on Twitter this year agreeing with us, not agreeing with well, us. The they're saying is, it they're the, in accord, I mean, but still, the main thing this year, I think, is. It was so much worse than it normally is. I mean, it's normally really fucking bad. Yeah. First step aside, again, but the thing with the pit stops and the changing tires and the red flag and everything meant that it was beyond boring. And the dri- you know, when the drivers are openly going, can we go a bit faster? And yeah. they're like, No. And after the race, all the drivers are going, well, that was shit, wasn't it? Because <laughs> I would look, I would have, I would have stopped my hate campaign and stalking of George Russell if he'd have gone. Do you know what? Fuck you, and just driven right up to the back of the next car, well, and then got stuck behind him for the whole race. Him, yeah. No, no, just got stuck behind the whole race and went, "Oh, you're probably right." Actually. Well, like Mansell style from whenever it was. <laughs> yeah, just like. <laughs> but that's a good point. You see, Monaco. I mean, and I, I don't want to get all nostalgic. We're, we're, we're going to talk about fucking Senna in a minute. That, <laughs> but you know, that race with Mansell and Senna, like it is just like it's like oh, it looks like they're trying to overtake. And in this race, there was no, there was no point where you thought anyone's even trying because well, you can't overtake. So what's the point in trying? And it's like, well, you are paid a lot of money. Give it a fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Magnussen did it. Yeah, he uh, didn't even get a penalty. Yeah. <laughs> so that's because if you don't go for a gap, maybe you're not a racing driver. Well, then fire the lot of them, <laughs> except for K Mag. Oh shit, <laughs> Senator. Very good. Uh, Lando might have the race win this year, but Oscar Piastri was the fastest McLaren in Monaco, looking quicker and more confident than Norris all weekend and picking up second place. Such was his speed that he probably could have won if he'd managed to grab pole, but then Monaco's silly track means Logan Sargent could probably win if he started in front. I realise that our previous discussion has completely uh, has completely abandoned that point because Logan Sargent was about the only driver to actually get overtaken, but still, the theory of the point stands. Um, yeah, we were full of praise for Norris in the last couple of races. And, he, you know, still, he, he was fine this weekend. But Piastri, oh, he was very good. I yeah. don't care. Oh, oh, come on, Terry. Why? Go I'm on. not. No, look, look th- 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 they did nothing. They had a nice livery. They right. respected a legend. What the fuck is going on? Why do you hate this legend, Terry? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Why do you on hate beatification Ayrton of Ayrton Senna? Oh, like... Just this, I've, I can't think of a precedent. I can't think of anything like Princess it. Diana. Mm. No, but no, but thirty years on, we're not all going. All oh, right, oh, no, we're going to go watch now for the BBC News, and everyone's dressed as Princess Diana. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of anything. Have oh, you not read the Daily Express lately? <laughs> well, but it's like can, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, and- Brazil's rose. <laughs> But also, and this is the thing, because Senna's got a very distinctive helmet, right? No joke. <laughs> <laughs> but when I was watching the kind of, when they're in the pits and they're all wearing like the, the Senna polo shirts that's like yellow, then a little blue stripe, yellow, then mm. a green stripe. And a small like pin badge for Ratzenberger. I know, yeah. Who? <laughs> who? Uh, c- can we market him? No, no one remembers who he is. Oh, and he's called Roland Rat, so, you know. And, um, <laughs> which really confused me when I was a kid. Seeing the news, anyway. Um, <laughs> but the car, because they, they did the worst of both worlds. They, they they 
they changed the car colours to Senna's helmet colours. Well, that's one thing. But then they kept it in the McLaren livery pattern. So it was like they had just like a big fucking triangle on the back of the car of green, which isn't what his helmet looked like. So when I was like watching this car go around the track, I was just looking at it going, this looks nothing like Senna's helmet. <laughs> it looks like it looks like a 1991-92 Benetton. Yeah. And it looks like that- it's Martin Brundle or who else was in there? Like Ricardo Patrese or... Um, yeah, and it's just... A Sch- Schumacher, was he? Yeah, Schumacher, Schumacher as well. Schumacher, yeah, a yeah. bit of Johnny Herbert. Hmm. And it's like, did nobody in the team go, this looks like a fucking Benetton? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it really does look like a Benetton. It and really in fact, uh, Jensen Button on the broadcast uh, came up with it as well. We mentioned it on Twitter, but Jensen Button noticed it. And I've refused to believe that he saw it on our thing on Twitter. So it, it's not just us. It was ridiculous. Like, if you're going to pay tribute to Senna at Monaco in a McLaren, you go red and white, surely. What about yeah, instead then, just a, a big picture of his face? Over like the whole, a photo. Yeah. Just Again, back to the Honda photo. Earth Dreams thing with the picture of the world. Just no, do no, that no, better. Do you remember, do you remember a, few, a few races ago, who was it? Albon had the big panda head helmet. Yeah. Yes. Right, that, but Senna's face. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. That'd be like um, uh, Valentino Rossi yeah. sandwich from a few years back in MotoGP. He did the same, but with his own face. Oh, they've <laughs> all got Senna's face. <laughs> this be like a be like a really distasteful, horrible tattoo. Like this, this misshapen someone's face. It's like who's that? Who is that? It's Senna. No, it, what? Its nose looks all weird. <laughs> and it's just. And let's not forget, Senna was a master around Monaco. But there was one year when he was so cocky, he just dozed off in the cockpit, crashed. Then went off to his apartment to sulk. There was, there was <laughs> one. Year, there was one year when he came second and thought he'd won. <laughs> Amazing. He was celebrating like he was. I think it was the year when he was in the, when he got second in the Tolman, which was a very good drive. But I think when he first passed across the line, he thought he'd won it, and then he hadn't. But yeah, I can't. This this has really pissed me off. I can't I can't express the anger that I have with it. It's like but this, it's, it's annoyed me so much. But am I right in thinking that your anger is not necessarily directed at Senna and his memory? It's the it's the attitude of everyone. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's the same. It's the same thing that you know. I mean, I'm not. I'm not a Michael Jackson fan for obvious reasons because he's a his clothes <laughs> can't slide and slander the dead yeah he's in not the same anymore. way in the same way <laughs> he's not anymore he hasn't well I, I, yeah. clean sheet for but a number in, of years now like if you go to the West End or something and there's like a Michael Jackson musical it's just this weird kind of this we live in this weird mm. world of nostalgia for dead people and rewriting history a little bit because you know said it wasn't perfect I'm not. I, I made it sound like Senna was a pedophile. Yeah, I don't <laughs> no, think he was. He wasn't. No, no <laughs> he wasn't. Uh, do we want to talk about uh, uh, Norris and Piastri at all? No, no. Okay. I mean, yep. they were fine. Piastri's very good. Uh, I think he's finally getting the hang of it. Although I'm not sure this was the race. Like normally, his weakness is tires, and obviously that wasn't a mad issue this week because everyone was going very slowly. But he did very well. I'm oh, very okay. impressed with him. All right. Mercedes. Lewis Hamilton has said he doesn't expect to beat George Russell in qualifying for the rest of the year. And so it proved in Monaco. Uh, the Mercs couldn't take it to the Ferrari or McLaren, but they did at least beat the Red Bulls, so that's something. Mm, well, we'll get to the Red Bulls, but... Yeah, I thought this was interesting from Hamilton, and, and I've had such a busy weekend, I haven't had to look into it, I haven't had a chance to look into it in any detail, but he basically said, as far as I can tell, that he, as you said, doesn't expect to beat uh, Russell in qualifying, and then I don't think sort of expanded on that. But my take on that was like, well... Is he that got because dragged you're... away, actually. Did he? Okay. Yeah. Have you, you, said, you probably they... know more of it than I did. No, then. I don't know more about it. All I saw, I saw the clip. I probably saw the same clip. I've seen it saw. written down. So you... No, I didn't see the clip. I just saw oh, it right. reported. So the clip, he basically says, it's, as Sky is speaking to him, and he, he basically says, yeah, I don't think I'm going to beat George Russell in qualifying for the rest of the year. And the reporter was like, oh, why is that? Like, why the rest of the year is actually what I think the question was. And as she said that, an arm came out and the shepherd's, a shepherd's pulled, pulled crook. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I don't know if there was. I don't think there was any elaboration. Like, uh, I didn't say um, any more of the clip, so I don't think he said anything else. My initial reaction to reading that was, presumably, that's because you're leaving and the team is not is is prioritising George. They're giving him all the good parts before you, and they're giving him all the technical briefings on how to use them. Presumably, like presumably, generally, George will have a better car whenever there are upgrades. That mm. was my take on it. Do you think he's on no. like gardening leave? <laughs> you know, when like you have to, he, you still got to be in the car, but he can't like he can't learn about all the little tricks and tips and stuff. I'm sure he, he, he must be being shut. He's being shut out of meetings, definitely. 
Yeah. Like he won't be being told about next year's car. He's he's going to find a lot of doors closed within Mercedes now, and it'd be interesting to know. How, I'm sure he expected it, but it'd be interesting to know how he deals with that because he'll he's been like the golden boy at Mercedes for however many years it is. When did he go there? Ten years ago, something like that. Yeah, but he's also I mean he's quite fragile in that way, isn't he? So you know he'll, things would affect him. A he, lot. Can, he can be quite sensitive, can't he? And that's not necessarily a dig; it's just kind of the way he is. But like, yeah, yeah, exactly. And he, I think, he wears his heart on his sleeve quite a lot. And yeah, th- there will be some weird things. And and also he's pretty, you know he's look. He, if the Mercedes was a championship-winning car this year, or potential, then that would be different. But yeah. also, the car's quite shit. So he's, and also the Ferrari has just won Monaco, so he's, you know, he's rubbing his hands in a way, isn't he? So he's doing the equivalent of he's handing his notice, and he's not showing up to me. He's not even showing up to meetings. He's he's put his <laughs> well, out of office. Invited. Yeah, but even if, you know, he's like, oh no, don't worry, I don't want to go to that one. Like, you're not invited. He's like, I, I wouldn't th- go anyway. I, I think go you made me. I think it'll bug him. I, th- I think to a certain extent you're right and he's got an R next year but I think it'll still bug him because he's like oh, you guys are my friends oh, I won eight or seven more championships with you but or six but I I wonder if it'll come out with a kind of him versus George Argy Bargy like if there's ever a kind of race where they're both in contention like I mean I'm 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 being overly hopeful here overly optimistic but imagine if at the end of the season there's a race, and they they tell Lewis Hamilton to move over for George for, uh, for George Russell, and he would. Be I like, don't know how he'd deal with that. You. I think he, he wouldn't. He might. It's like, that. why would he be like? No, I'm not doing. It. Like, what are they going to do? Fire him? Oh, that's so good. Mm, I know. That would be good. Where imagine. are they in the championship? Oh, they're right next to each other. Russell yeah. is seventh on fifty four points. Hamilton is eighth on forty two points. All right. And then, like, Toto come over the radio going, you've got to do it for the team. Remember all the good times we had? <laughs> I always love you, Lewis. I do have to do it. You. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Red Bull. The collapse of the Red Bull empire continues apace. Sergio Perez was perhaps at least partially to blame for his sizable first lap shunt that robbed him of 16th place. And Max Verstappen was fighting a car that didn't want to behave in Monaco to finish 6th. Where does Red Bull go from here, guys? Backwards. Uh, Actually, they'll, they'll probably they'll not. Be, they'll probably they'll be fine a bit, in Canada. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll walk Canada. Yeah, they might still. But, I mean, <laughs> three races in a row now where they've not been... Mad dominant, and they were nowhere on this one. And it was only it was last year. It was only Singapore, and obviously there's there's comparisons to be made between Monaco and Singapore, but they're not really the same. Track. Tax, yes, <laughs> tax and street tracks. Mm. Um, but street tax, they were they were nowhere. Let's talk. Should we talk? Okay, what should we talk about first? Should we talk about the uh, the car, or should we talk about Perez's crash? Uh, the, well, the crash because it happened first, and I want to okay. do what. Happened in the race and blow our load early. Go. Um, so, initially, mm. I thought to myself, that is 100% Kevin Magnussen's fault. And now, having watched it repeatedly, I think it's pretty much still mostly Kevin Magnussen's fault. But there is <laughs> at least slightly an argument that when he started to go to the right of him, there was space on the track and the door was closed because th- it was a bit of the track going up the hill where it goes right and then left. And if you're taking the ra- racing line, you would follow the line that Perez took, which would be to go to the outside for the left-hand corner coming up. So go to the, go to the right of the track to take the left-hand corner. And in doing so, squeezed Magnussen. Now, I guess it comes down to, should Perez have realised that Magnussen was there and given him room? Or was Magnuson? Should Magnuson really have realised what was going to happen? And my position is probably eighty-five to ninety percent the latter. That it was silly for Magnuson; he should have known what was happened. But had Perez realised it was there, he should have given him a bit more room. Mm. I've got some sympathy for Sergio Perez on this one. Wow! Because wow, I know what it's like. Oh, 
Oh. He is in a he's in a Red Bull. He should be getting like ones and twos and challenging for the championship. And he had a good start to the season, and now it's all gone to shit. And now he's on lap one in Monaco, and he's dicing it with the Hasses. And it's the same as I feel when I'm in like Lidl or something. You know, I understand why I'm here, but I shouldn't be here with you people. <laughs> you people, <laughs> holy fuck! Yeah, I should be at Fortnum and Mason. <laughs> yeah, I should be getting my food fucking made for me by. a personal chef but instead I'm <laughs> pretending to find the middle aisle funny even though I find it really quite depressing actually and buying lots of weirdly off brand stuff that I, I then pretend tastes fine but actually makes me wretch every time and when you're in that situation it's really hard to kind of pay attention to your surroundings <laughs> if you if you you wouldn't have noticed me, Kevin Magnuson either <laughs> if you'd used that analogy last week I would have been really angry at you because I quite like little but I, I was at the pub at the weekend and a man walked into the pub garden wearing little trainers like and I don't, I don't mean as in he just bought them from little they are branded little right so they're sort of like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah little socks little shorts a little t-shirt a it little sounds like you're saying little it does little, sound a little bit like that a little a really little a little cute little man came little, did you see a leprechaun he was wearing little shoes a little a little bum bag and a little hat wow and it I, turns out he was just far away he, he really loved little things wow show a little love <laughs> give and a little I respect i hated him i hated him so i'm, at, so I'm more absolutely of an guy. on board yeah now fuck you anyone that likes little you cuts don't have a anyway I, I i hate to break it all to you but it's not pronounced little 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 oh damn it do you want me to start that story again yeah please <laughs> <laughs> he was wearing little he was wearing a little pair of shorts <laughs> That's Suddenly it becomes Mexican. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. Um, it's, it's all working very well. Yeah, so I think it was Magnuson's <laughs> fault. But I don't think it was quite as much Magnuson's fault as it initially seemed to be. But it's still Magnuson's fault. I just wanted Magnuson to get a race ban. That was I'm all. I'm fucking astounded that he hasn't... No, nothing was investigated. Like, yeah, I'm really surprised. Even, look at it. I thought was there nailed on... that something was going to be investigated? Well, no, I thought nailed on... That is yeah. that's that's Magnuson out the next race because he's on ten penalty points. Surely that's that the size of the crash that he caused. When you consider what um, uh, Grosjean did, which we talked about before at Belgium and whenever it was when he caused that massive pile up, mm. he got a race ban for that straight off the bat. Not even an accumulation of points. That was just a straight race ban. Surely, yeah. I have a surely th- that was a race ban. I, I have a. I've got a weird feeling that modern FIA don't want the bad press of banning a driver. Because it'll, it'll be like headline story. I mean, you know, I think every, in everyone sport. surely thought he brought it on himself there. That's like no, the no, culmination no, no, I, of Magnussen over the last few races. So I feel like the FIA is painting themselves into a corner where they don't want to ban a driver, but now they have a driver who is essentially immune. He's now got diplomatic immunity because <laughs> he can now do whatever the fuck he wants. The next race, he's just gonna. He's, he'll just start five minute, five seconds before the lights go out. And just <laughs> do, 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 do. Fuck I'm you! Like, oh, I don't even have a helmet on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's gonna get somebody to wave the checkered flag for him, so that he wins. Um, yeah. So, the car, the speed of Red Bull generally, is terrible, f- by Red Bull standards. Like that. They were nowhere. Sixth? For, for Stappen? Yeah, but didn't we, didn't we always know that this was going to be the case in Monaco anyway? We suspected the that, that they wouldn't runs. be great, but yeah. I didn't think but it they would were be quite than... this bad. Mm. Like, they were really struggling just to drive and the fucking knew he was thing. there this weekend, trying to suppress a giggle. <laughs> <laughs> Waving his tape. He took the tape off again. He just took that tape off again. We know it. It did... It did feel a bit like, because all the interviews, uh, it's like they're trying to throw Newey under the bus. It's like, the, I saw an interview with Christian Horner where he was, he didn't say it, but it felt like he was heavily implying, you know, oh, well, it's fucking Newey, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he, sh- he designed a piece of shit. What, the same Newey that was your saviour about a month ago? Yeah, fucking A. Shit, everything yeah, exactly he touches turns to yeah. shit. What a cunt. Oh, wouldn't even fuck his PA. What a cunt. <laughs> Uh, this is all extra editing work. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, I, t- I tend to agree with the previous point that it, it won't be like that in Canada. I think they'll be back to right up the front. 
Verstappen, anyway. Perez won't be, obviously, but um, I'll be fucking staggered if they're not. Could that happen? Are we are we reading? Uh, should I, we be I reading more into so. this? I don't know. I I, I hope so. I mean, I do because no, it'll be interesting. It not 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 because of you know hatred of Red Bull, but more like it'll make everything much more interesting. But I can't help thinking that well, we just think had a few slightly weird most, circuits. I think, I think I think Verstappen will be back on form, but it'll just be really interesting to see what happens with Perez and if the gap I mean, is sort of still. <laughs> Perez not, will be like obviously fifth, as big as fourth as he always is. Yeah, I mean, I. I, I think there's a big psychological thing here. So not Verstappen, because he will... If the car can win, he'll win it. Like, we know he's that good. You know, even I'm saying that now. But Damn. the team is in such disarray. There's these factions going on. You've got Newey's just left. And then... Well, sort of. work for the team... Sort of, he's left. Well, yeah. Yeah, he's leaving. And if you work for a team that at the start of the year, you know, you're basically going to walk into a championship. And even though they all say, you've got to treat each race like it's the last one, blah, 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 you've got to fight hard. You know, there must be a bit of complacency steps in, but you're just like, fuck it up. We're, t- we're like so far ahead, we don't even have to bother. And now suddenly the team is falling apart and the car's not as quick. Like, I wonder if actually there'll be something within the structure of the team that actually starts to really fall apart because yeah. they're, they're not really... I, it's like when I used to do comedy... And I turn up to a gig, and there was no audience. And I'd be like, oh, f- oh, at least I can go home. <laughs> and then just before I get my coat on, like 10 people walk in. And I'm like, fuck, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> I want to go home. And I feel it's the equivalent. They're all just like, we're going to win this. We don't have to try. And it's like, you got to try. Oh, fuck's sake. I don't want to try. Uh, <laughs> so you're saying that Red Bull at the moment is watching a Terry Saunders comedy show from 2008. An absolute shit show with some sexual harassment <laughs> aggravate with allegations. <laughs> just a typical show. RB. Yuki Tsunoda's quietly good season continued in Monaco with 8th place, once again trouncing Daniel Ricciardo, who is still at the team for some reason. It is a quietly good season, isn't it? I mean, we've been loosely commenting in passing most episodes. I was like, oh yeah, Yuki Tsunoda's done quite well again. But this is I've lost track of how many times we've done that now. We haven't... But three. isn't this like... Four is he three? Is he three or four years into his career? Oh, he's, he's enough that he should be at this stage anyway. And maybe it's damning him yeah. with faint praise that we're commenting on it. But it's like, oh, he's doing all right when he should be. It should be where he's at anyway. But yes, but yes, because when you have drivers coming in like Max Verstappen who like win a race on their first attempt, and you're like, oh, here's another guy. After four years, he's just about all right. <laughs> <laughs> is that? But then when you put him next that, to Danny Ricardo, who's been in for like you? Ricardo's been like there for oh. ten years, and he's. <laughs> Rubbish. He's worse than he was when he no, started. So, well, let, let th- throw, throw the old uh, hypothetical then. So if you put Yuki Tsunoda in the Red Bull instead of the RB, how do you think he would fare? Oh, he'd get absolutely tranced. I don't he'd think... Like, crane right the now. thing is, I don't think he'd do any better than Perez, with the possible caveat that his mind isn't as broken as Perez's. Mm. Let's face it. Every Verstappen teammate has been destroyed by Verstappen, so there's no way to think that Tsunoda would be any different. But I'd like to see him. It get might be getting to the point where the Verstappen effect on <laughs> it might be getting to the point where the Verstappen effect on the teammates is such that you have to accept the fact that they're going to get destroyed by the, by Verstappen, and that you just have to pick drivers that will that you'll get as much out of them as possible before they in effect die. So is that not Perez? Is he not the perfect? I mean, teammate? maybe, but I'd, I'd dog... argue that we're past that point now. I think he's been squeezed dry and needs to be discarded. And a fresh, okay, so of the a current, fresh one put but in. Of the current grid, so not necessarily an RB driver, but of the current grid, who do you think has the right temperament to go up against Verstappen and say, yeah, I'm fine? Science. I think I know. Bottas. Oh, that's not a bad oh, shout, actually. He's, he did that for a long he's time. He's done it already. He's, he's accepted so he'll be like a lot. Going, Look, I'll cut my hair. I'll stop doing silly adverts. I'll just pretend to be good again. No, they'd and, like that. You know, Red Bull would be fine with that, I think. I Not think they'd actually Red embrace Bull. that. I think Red Bull is zany enough that they'd be like, yeah, you can keep the mullet. You can keep doing it. We'll have some of that. That's fine. Would you, yes, except you'll be one, doing it out of a helicopter or something. Keep the mullet, and then one day I'll be in the garage and like Horner will come up behind him and try and fuck it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Allegedly. <laughs> the real solution uh, is to just have a step no, in. You can't cars, alleged, no, you can't allegedly a hypothetical situation. <laughs> well, I mean, you might say that, but the lawyers couldn't possibly sign up on it. <laughs> yes, yeah. What lawyers? Uh, Hello, I'm our lawyer. <laughs> yes, fine. <laughs> our lawyer, Richard Lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> and Ricardo. Ricardo knows Monaco. Ricardo's done very well at Monaco. 
but he's yeah. still four places behind Sonoda. So, I mean, who who are they kidding that he's even like? Why why would you have Ricardo now? I don't understand. Contract. And the also runs. Williams! Alex Albon had a corking weekend to thrash the Williams into the points while Logan Sargent managed 15th place, which is better than Joe Guan Yu, but still terrible considering four drivers failed to finish. Yeah, good stuff from Albon. Very well done. That car is not a top 10 car, so but he got it into 9th. Which is it is cool. now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, well done to the lad. And he's, you know... We were talking about them earlier with the possibility of science coming in. He he's a solid he's a solid foundation on which to build. Hmm. Hurrah, Sergeant is terrible. Well done, I can't believe he's still yes. there. <laughs> As to Martin, Alonso went out in Q1 thanks to traffic and climbed up three places to eleventh in the race, but that's still no points. Lance Stroll was quicker than Alonso in qualifying, but then hit the wall in the race, got a puncture, and finished fourteenth. Rubbish. We should. Probably- it's my favourite time of year. It's like when you first see the Coca-Cola advert, you know it's Christmas coming. <laughs> Alonso is starting to complain about his team. Oh! oh did he complain about the team? I missed that. What did he say? I forget the exact quote, but he was just there was a, he's just start, he's not quite complaining, but he's starting to grumble. You know, you could just it's like it's like the first rumble of a belly before you get hungry. You're like, <laughs> okay. Here we go. What was the general vibe of it? Cuz I missed this. What did he what was the general vibe of what he said? Can you remember? He was just com- he was just complaining about the, the the updates and the handling, and it was it was he was he was he was making mistakes, but he said it wasn't his fault. It's, kind of thing. Two so tough like, races, oh. two tough races in a row yeah. from him now because he was lousy in the last yeah. race. Um, and arguably, if he was in traffic, then that probably wasn't entirely his fault. But he wasn't really anywhere, and Stroll's making mistakes. So, uh, I mean, what else do we have to say about them? They they they're bringing in upgrades. And they're not doing anything. <laughs> if anything, they're making the car worse and more difficult to drive, which can't be good. It feels like they're copying Mercedes <laughs> again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Supplier's going to supply. Maybe that's what Mercedes are supplying. Engines and incompetence. Alpine. Esteban Ocon is in deep doo-doo after thrashing into his teammate and c- taking himself out on lap one. But Pierre Gasly recovered to take a point, which is surely a good result for Alpine. On the one hand, Ocon's fucked everything up. But on the other hand, where, remember where Alpine were a couple of races ago? They were the shittest car on the grid, and they got a point. And Gasly got the point after being crashed into. I'd say that's pretty good, isn't it? I mean, yeah. Yeah. But also... I no. mean, no, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There we go. Alpine. Yeah. Done. The end. Salba. They were there, apparently. Were they? I do remember seeing, I was watching the race with my daughter, who was four, and at the start of the, just as they were lining up on the grid, they had a camera from the back of the grid as both the Salvas came in at the back. And my daughter went, <laughs> my daughter went, wow, those cars look fast, daddy. And I was like, oh, 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 oh they're not, but they do look all right, because I still like the green. And then I didn't see them again. That green is my favourite livery. Yeah, looks nice. I love that colour. Yeah, mm. but it's slow as shit. Mm. Yep. Maybe yeah. there's too much green. They stripped it off. Maybe they'd be faster. They wouldn't be. He still well, overtook Sergeant, though, didn't he? But they they fixed their um, pit stop problem. They have. They're still they're, shit. But they they're still shit. Yeah. So actually, in a way, it's careful what you wish for, isn't it? Well, this like, is oh, I've only this is the Red Bull Renault thing pit from a few years ago. I'd win. And yeah. the McLaren Renault thing from a few years ago. Well, no, it was it was McLaren, wasn't it? Where well, actually the Red Bull Renault thing was Renault, but the when McLaren said that the reason they were slow was Renault, and then it turned out it wasn't. They were still shit. Correct. Unless we have the audio from inside the cars. Yeah, I'm just saying has for every bit of carbon fibre on the floor. Need to keep going for a while. Careful, he's going to come. Kevin Magnussen somehow escaped without sanction for taking out both Perez and Hulkenberg in a move that was at best unwise and at worst fucking stupid. Surely he should be getting a racing ban now? I mean, we've touched on it already, but yes, I think he probably should. But I mean, this... When you think about bad weekends for teams, this must be up there now. Because not... Not only did the teammates take each other... No, I know Magnussen took out, out both teammates on lap one of the race within 500 metres of the start. 
but they were both starting at the back because they'd both been disqualified from qualifying for having illegal cars. Which we I don't want to get into because this, this is the quick round, but I did not understand why they were disqualified. I, I, I read it and heard it and was told about it a hundred times, and it's like something to do with measuring the wing, and I'm like, I don't They were care. too wide or not <laughs> nope. wide enough. Nope. Or too high nope. or too low. Nope. They were wrong. No. Nope. The wings nope. were wrong. No. Bad. That's what that's what the FIA said to them. No. Bad hats. <laughs> no. Your wings are wrong. Start at the back. And they did, and then they both crashed, and it couldn't have really gone any worse that weekend. I think sure. even the even the weekend when Roman Grosjean exploded <laughs> was actually not as bad as this weekend. And now it's time for the state of F1 with Terry Saunders. Okay, can we have some nice soft hippie massage? New Age music in the background, Ollie, when you edit this. Thank you. Fuck's sake. I mean, as if I haven't got enough to do, and you want Sorry. Some- <laughs> got a lot of c*** to take out. I'll, I'll find some now. Here it is. Ooh. Hey, welcome to the 2025 renamed Mindfulness Grand Prix in Monte Carlo. After the 2024 race, it was deemed that something about Monaco needed to be changed. And after much discussion about lengthening the track, axing it all together, or using sprinklers, we at Monte Carlo Board Ape Crypto Made in Italy MSC Cruises Yacht Club decided to actually lean in to some of Monaco's best features. So join us, as instead of the five red lights at every other track, we instead light five candles, ask you to wear comfortable clothes, lie on a giant pillow, light a joint, and get ready for the least exhilarating race of your life. Are you ready? And one, two, three... Four, five, blow. It's candles out, and away we go. <laughs> I didn't mean to say blow then. I just read the word blow. <laughs> <laughs> Breathe in through your nose as all the cars wind through Sandivot. We've eliminated last year's anti-sleep-depriving drama by suffocating K-Mag and firing Perez. So now you don't have to worry that anything might happen. And we're using all the cranes to hold incense. <laughs> and breathe out through the mouth. Oi! Who the fuck are you? <laughs> oh, hi Terry. I'm Terry from next year. You've gone all spiritual again. Have I fuck? <laughs> have you been fucking my ex? <laughs> she said you'd be like this. Breathe in. <laughs> fuck off! <laughs> right. Now I've got a year left to live before my own brutal murder by my own hands. We're running out of time to fix the Monaco Grand Prix. So don't worry, I've got a solution. Monaco is great. It's got tight winding corners, armco barriers, an incredible history. It's haunted by the ghost of Ayrton Senna, who makes everything fucking yellow for some reason. And most importantly, it's really, really fucking boring. It's actually quite impressive how you can make threading giant cars at speed through those streets dull. But well done, F1. You fucking nailed it. At its best, Monaco is great, and its best only comes when the weather is shit or the good teams are fucked up, as in 1996 when Olivier Panis managed both. We can't keep going back there just because that's what we do, and we can't make Saturday everything, so here are my ways to fix Monaco. Don't worry, I have a solution again. Right, strap in. (laughs) One. Slowest lap award. Instead of the fastest lap award, the drivers with the slowest laps gets points deducted. <laughs> Two, Super Saturday. Qualifying is great, so make it last forever. Fill up the cars and send them out until they crash. <laughs> Three, lap one all the time. The first lap is always the best, so stop the race after each lap, then line them up on the grid again. Six, I've lost count. Hydraulic barriers. Move barriers in at random. That'll keep them on their toes. Seven, blind spot. They've got to do the race blindfolded. Eight, tunnel lasers. If you get it wrong, your head comes off. Nine, Monte Carlo. There's fucking water lilies everywhere. Ten, Gary Barlow. The take that singer has to pay tax for every overtake. Eleven, kittens. Just unleash kittens all over the track. Twelve, depth charges. It won't change the race, but it'd be great seeing the yacht sink in the background. 106 to back pipe marijuana <laughs> through their helmet hoses not a euphemism 12 <laughs> special Monaco cars give all the teams a budget of 100 grand and let them build what the fuck they want 15 soft tyres get ready to do what they do best to make inexplicably shit tyres that barely last a lap 27 K-Mac RS if you're second behind the car in front K-Mac tries to kill you at 100 double DRS if you're a second behind you press a button in the car in front as both its front and rear wings go open <laughs> and It's time to wake up. (laughs) I'm bleeding out. Can someone call an ambulance? Oh, Oh, my face hurts. Uh, I mean, there's enough there. Surely some of them have got to to land. (laughs) That was special Monaco cars. We've already spoken about that one. Yeah. I mean, 
I don't want to toot my own trumpet, but Monet Carlo. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah Tremendous. brilliant. Absolutely yeah. superb. That that got me. <laughs> that got me. I love that one. Oh, dear. <sighs> okay. That's it from us. Uh, we'll be back even before there's more racing with another of Phil Troman's race previews. And we'll be answering your questions in Listener's Corner. Until then, it's goodbye to Phil Troman's. Goodbye. We haven't had time to talk about the fact that apparently Sergio Perez has been offered a new contract, but it's only for one year. And, they, and then he said, can it be two years? And Red Bull said no. And to Terry Saunders. We haven't talked about the Indy 500. It happened, but uh, we haven't got time to talk about it. Didn't watch it. In the meantime, check out our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash for f one sake, and follow us on Twitter at for f one sake. Oh, and check out our YouTube channel where you can see as well as hear us. If you're watching on YouTube already, here's something just for you. Um, oh. Well, the subscribers have gone down now. Yeah, I thought they'd be getting gradually better as the weeks went on but they haven't uh however you want to watch or listen just type in for f1's sake to something and see what comes up terry where can people buy merch ff1s.com forward slash chop 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 excellent thanks for listening i've been ollie pitt goodbye Bye. Bye.